It was May 26, 2022. The sun was beginning to dim out in the skyline of Night City, not that you could see it in the thick, polluted air, nor did it make a difference for those not entirely hooked into reality. Netrunners never considered entertaining the physical realm. They chose the freedom of the vast, unexplored, high-speed, and limitless cyberspace and net architectures within. If you wanted to see a sunset, you could see it any time here. A simulation better than the real thing, even amplifying all of your correct senses to improve the experience. A young netrunner in her late 20s, long braided red hair, and a short stature had just jacked into the net for some programming. In the middle of his session, she was interrupted by an annoying mail alert. It blocked her vision with a fat sausage bee and a virtual voice saying, You've got mail. Oh God, oh God, oh God, it's coming. Now, yes. The message was from her close friend and colleague Netrunner, Raish Bartmoss. He knew exactly how to peeve the woman. She hated it. The message contained was simple. It read, Oxbat 1, one of the many codes Raish and her had worked out to arrange meetings and chat rooms and the like. This particular code was unfamiliar and somewhat alarming in comparison to the rest. It had never been used before because it was the code, the holy mother of God, it's all happening now code. With how Raish's mind works, he hadn't even used this code when he got flatlined and confined to the stasis of the freezer unit. In response, Ryder Murphy urgently rushed to this chat room, crashing in with all her icebreakers and killer utilities loaded. Demon's flying point? It works. What she found was somewhat unsettling. Raish was just standing there, calm as could be. Sweetheart, I'm so glad you could make it. He said. None of his standard psychosis even made a cameo in the timbre of his voice. Unlike the average person, being calm and perfectly normal created an eerie atmosphere around Raish. It was just too outside the norm. It was like he was suddenly Mrs. Claus or something. Have I ever told you how much I love you? Come on, they just loaded this romantic little VR at the dunes. Let's go. Just the two of us. Okay. Spider responded nervously. Just hearing him talk like that, that tone, those words, soul chilling. The two went somewhere in Asia, an undisclosed location, in the middle of net nowhere. Suddenly an icon appeared, a simple matte black ball. Every year I come here, and every year I reset this. Then he looked at Spider, right in the eyes. She thought she could see a swelling of tears. But I'm through, Arabella. A wry smile. My cookie is goosed, I suppose I'd say. I wanted, well, I didn't want to do this alone. Someone has to see it. I, I want you to be here. He paused, took a breath. Well, here it goes. He looked at the ball. He waved his hand, a ping, and it changed to a globe. He shook his head, a whistle, and it changed to a switch, and it squeaked into a big red button. No, that, that's not it either. Then there followed this flurry of noises and icons flashing by, an almost cartoon stream of images. A car, a bomb, a kid, a wallaby, a cream pie, it all went on, accompanied by a cacophony of grunts, pops, barks, you name it. This went on for 30 seconds. Oh, frag it all, he said finally. Covering his eyes, he thrust his forefinger at the shifting icon. As it hit, the icon froze. His finger ended up sticking in the nostril of a clown's head. As it pushed in, there was a squawk. He turned and smiled, half relief, half psychosis. He pulled his finger from the happy clown's nose and whimpered. This was at least moderately familiar turf when it comes to Raish. What have you done? Spider inquired. Her deck began to crash as he answered, jamming the IG transform signal and trashing her tracer routine. What have I done? Just wait, Spidey, he said with a demonic smile. Wait, and you'll see, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. The communication ended, and with it, the net as everyone knew it. In the year of 2077, the use of computer technology has become truly universal. Regular Janes and Joes know how to use these systems to access information, communicate, and even fight. But there are others who can use the same tech to work wonders. Netrunners. A netrunner knows the ins and outs of computer systems the programming languages, and even write or mod a killer virus. Deck in hand, they're just as dangerous as a corporate soldier armed to the teeth. 
While Netrunners were once considered the rulers of cyberspace, using their skull jacks to roam a vast global net in special suits to cool themselves, the landscape has changed to something unrecognizable. The era ended with a cataclysm programmed by the greatest Netrunner of all, Raish Bartmoss. His close friend, Spider Murphy, of course saw this firsthand. There were three Netrunners considered to be the legends of the early 2000s net. Raish Bartmoss, Spider Murphy, and Al Cunningham. While there were a few others, these would be the three that are brought up the most often and easily had the largest effect on the 2000s. All three happened to be a close-knit group that shared their love for the net. While a lot can be learned about Raish Bartmoss and Al Cunningham from 2077 alone, Spider Murphy isn't entirely the same. She wasn't the mastermind behind the data crash or soul killer, so naturally she isn't brought up in conversation nearly as much only appearing in the 2023 flashback and having a few encrypted entries in the spellbook shard. So, just who is Spider Murphy? Where did she come from? And what did she do to rank amongst the likes of Raish Bartmas and Alt Cunningham? Today, we will be unraveling the story and truth behind one of Night City's most talented netrunners. This is the legend of Spider Murphy. Spider Murphy was born to the name Arabella in the year of 1995. By the age of 9, she was already beginning to net run with her first cyber deck, a Hitachi Radio Shack 95. While this piece of hardware was nowhere up to standard, even for its time, it was enough to jump into the fray, so much so that she used it to hack into a Zeta Tech sales office and falsified an order to have them send her a new Heronline 5750A cyber deck providing her everything she needed, speed, power, and memory. She was falling in love. At the age of 13, Spider was already comfortable and experienced with high levels of net running. One day, as her drunken father spoke to his bottle, he spilled some information from his work as a corporate puppet, specifically about the infamous net runner Raish Bartmoss, who Spiner had previously heard of on the street. Her father had killed his state identification number a form of ID that encoded a person's criminal and tax history, as well as their DNA pattern, all of which is duplicated in state government mainframes. If your SIN is deleted, you can't legally get a job, you can't vote, and your rights are pretty much hash. In hindsight, something like this wouldn't truly affect a mastermind like Bart Moss, but Spider wanted to track him down to warn him. When she managed to finally locate Bart Moss, she was surprised to set her eyes on an acne-ridden 17-year-old, who looked a lot more like 25. Even furthering the surprise, he'd been running the net for 13 years, starting when Spider had barely even entered the world. He had a full set of high-quality trodes and a library of software the likes of which Spider had never seen. It was immediately clear that Bartmoss' skills were on a different order of magnitude, akin to even an uncanny sixth sense. From that moment on, Spider would learn under the teachings of Bartmoss, everything the net had to offer. Through this process, they would become extremely close friends. During the 2010s, Spider Murphy, Raish Bartmoss, along with a couple of their netrunner friends named Dog and Edger, would practically run the net for not only fun, but for the freedom of it as well especially since Spider and Bartmoss were practically untouchable when it came to netrunning. The group would lynch netwatch hacks just because they could, and because it was the right thing to do, refusing to take any payment for the skills they possessed and the destruction that would ensue. It wasn't about taking over corporate architecture, but purely destroying them for the sheer hysteria of doing what everyone else thought was impossible. Spider was much more skilled than the other top-level corporate or mercenary netrunners. She used a completely custom cyber deck that was faster and more secure than decks by those same runners. She tended to use utilitarian and non-lethal software. In contrast to Bartmoss, who liked to use flamboyant and deadly programs. A quirk of Spider was her fondness of quoting famous and well-known philosophers and public figures a personality that would be encapsulated by her net icon, a realistic rendition of a well-endowed redhead anime girl wearing tight clothing. 
It was all these factors, her skills, non-lethal approach, philosophy, and stories that formed a reputation that would be shared with the same reverence as other legends. The chemistry that Spider had formed with Barmas would undergo some pretty massive changes in the year of 2020. She received a notification from Bartmas, opening up to one of the many predetermined codes for arranged chat meetings between the two, stating, Thought you might be interested. This was supposed to be a relatively unassuming message by its context, but Spider would instead be informed of Bartmas's physical death. His heart had stopped from an unknown cause, but his life support machines, sensing that his heart had stopped, pulled him down to prevent decay. Thanks to him being connected to the net at the time, he was able to continue living within it. During this time, Spider would help Bart Moss compile his guide of the net in Brainware Blowout books, both of which becoming a sort of biography as well as complete comprehensive guide for net running, including information on net architectures, corporations, software, and even hardware. Bart Moss even decided to release the Succubus 3 program and made it look like Spider Murphy's net icon as a sort of prank and she couldn't retaliate against him any longer. After releasing these books and spreading them discreetly across the net, to avoid corporations of infecting them with malicious viruses or getting their hands on valuable information, Militech would request the help of Raish Bartmas to locate Soul Killer 2.0. While Bartmas was initially inclined to reject this contract and attack Militech in reprisal, Alt Cunningham managed to convince both Bartmas and Murphy to hunt for Soul Killer. All three were close friends and took each other's words seriously. The two agreed to aid Alt and Militech. The search would end up being extremely quick, as within a month, the location of Soul Killer was discovered. During a programming session in 2022, sometime after the fact, Spider Murphy suddenly received an alert from Bart Moss, categorized as Fox Bat 1 Code, the highest of the predetermined codes between the two, one that had never been used before. She was invited to a chat room that she would hurry to with anxiety surging through her. She was welcomed by an uncharacteristically calm Bart Moss, a Bart Moss void of psychosis. He confessed his love for her and invited her on a date, where he released the rabbits to the net and caused the data crash right before his death, a detail Spider wouldn't find out until after her cyberdeck had already crashed. While saddened by Bart Moss's death, he was happy with the data crash, believing it would end corpo rule. She would realize soon enough that she was wrong. On July 5th, 2023, could create an entry in her cyberdeck about everything that had gone wrong. Localization and strict city nets had destroyed the freedom of netrunners. Every corp, government, and even gang now had their own net that they rule with an iron fist. With no regulation or accountability, with surveillance only worsening, the rebellion of netrunners felt futile. Pained by Bartmoss' death and wanting revenge, Murphy ended up in a Militech camp and insisted on joining Johnny Silverhand's team, who were hired to destroy the new version of the Soul Killer program being developed in the Arasaka Night City HQ and to rescue Alt Cunningham from their network. A surprise to someone like Morgan Blackhand, who had purposely av avoided using netrunners like her during the Shadow Wars. A decision made not just because of their unwillingness to work with Mega Corps, but also that the combat netrunners required vastly differed to the likes of Spider Murphy. Her participation in the raid was approved, likely because of her connections to the team members, Alt Cunningham, and her familiarity with the programs involved. On August 20th, 2023, Silverhand Strike Team Beta succeeded in their infiltration of the Arasaka HQ. On their way to the labs, the group were notified by Blackhand that Arasaka security was beginning to pinpoint their location and that they would need to move quickly Knowing that they were discovered and about to enter combat, Spider Murphy hastily bypassed the lab doors with physical help from, from Shaitan, where she jacked into the console to contact Alt and dumped her into the memory core before releasing a virus to destroy every trace of Soul Killer from the system. Before leaving, she downloaded critical info about the higher ups of Arasaka and those who wrote the program and received a piece of the Soul Killer from Alt to use if needed. 
Just when Silverhand's team was prepping for evacuation from the labs, Adam Smasher and two squads of Arasaka troopers cut their way in. With very little time to react, Spider would scatter Alt's icons into the net tagged by markers, with the hopes of retrieving her at some point in the future. An emergency action in the case of her data suitcase being destroyed, or worse, being killed or captured. As she exited the net and prepared to enter the fight, she could feel the weight of her flechette pistol, an unexpected comfort for the netrunner. In the middle of combat, Johnny's voice rings out, not in song, but in challenge. Johnny was challenging Adam Smasher in plain sight, a Melitech SMG in one hand, the Malorian in the other. Adam turns, but hesitates, astonished at the audacity of the rocker boy, challenging him with weapons that won't even increase his cyborged armor. He raises his auto shotgun and open fires, putting the young rocker in half. Johnny spins and falls to the ground, a surprised look on his face, the Malorian still smoking in his fist. The full Borg Shaitan took this opportunity to emerge from the wall behind Adam and begin grappling with him. Seeing an opening, Rogue and Spider react as one. Both are running and gunning, breaking down Arasaka troopers. While Rogue is accustomed to this lifestyle as a solo, Spider is clearly not, trying to drown out her thoughts by telling herself repeatedly that this reality was just a V-Sim, a game she was partaking in. In the middle of this desperate escape, Spider reaches inside her jacket, pulling out a data slug Alt Cunningham downloaded to her so long ago. She whispered, Sorry Johnny, as she rams it home into the back of the dying rocker's skull. Then she turns, reaches out for the data suitcase, and realizes that it has too been savaged by the gunfire. Completely wrecked, two friends down in as many minutes, he quietly wishes Alt good luck, and parts ways with the rocker whose head still contains the data chip she had inserted, one that would create his engram on that very spot moments from his final breath. But at least Johnny will be avenged, Spider thinks as she and Rogue drag the wounded Thompson to the elevator. She softly touches the remaining data chips in her pocket, so will Raish. After reaching the rooftop, the team awaited AV extraction with Black Hand's crew. Just as the AV arrived, Adam Smasher did as well on the rooftop and a new Dioni conversion, waving Shaitan's biopod in his hand, haunting Blackhand for a duel. A long-lasting rivalry between the two would need to be settled now, with Shaitan's life as the bid. Blackhand jumped off the AV, ensuring its departure, before engaging Smasher with unknown results as a nuclear device activated in the lower floors of HQ. An unexpected outcome to everyone on the AV. 22 hours after the fall of the towers, Kai Arasaka awoke with a start. He was aboard the Sea Viper, that's engines were no longer audible. They were turned off, but why? Kai had given no orders, but it couldn't be possible that they had already arrived at the rendezvous so soon. He called out to his bodyguards, with only silence in response. He slid his hand into the secret panel in the bulkhead above and withdrew his pistol. As he opened the door, Kai laid eyes on his guards, slumped in the alcove. He checked their pulses and discovered they were alive. No sign of a struggle, a smell of ozone. Some sort of taser or EMP pulse must have knocked the two out. As Kai traversed the Sea Viper, everyone was either missing or slumped over at their station, yet not a single person showed a sign of a fight. It's as if they had all simultaneously felt unconscious. He finally arrived to the forecastle discovering the tea ceremony room was ominously lit up. Still gripping his pistol, he slid open the door. A soft amber glow illuminated a low table, on which are set a massive handgun, some kind of computer gear, and a dozen caseless rounds. On the far side is a young, somewhat pretty woman dressed in a kimono. Her face seems unaccustomed to the grim look on it. His memories flash before him, attempting to form an association. Kai raised his pistol. Spider Murphy, an unexpected pleasure. You are, however, uninvited. I invited myself. I scoffed in response, and I believe I have the power to enforce my will. He waved his gun to make it clear what he meant. You need bullets to use that, if I remember correctly. But I could be wrong. After all, I'm just a data thief. Her lips form a smirk. Pi stares in disbelief at the rounds on the table, 
Dumbfounded, he pops the magazine of his handgun open to find it empty. Mine, of course, is loaded. Your people are fine. Some will need medical attention. It's amazing what you can do with less than lethal technology these days. And a few talented friends. I see two figures step out from behind a painted screen. One an Alpha Borg he doesn't recognize. The other, a woman whose demeanor says solo. While they do not brandish their weapons, their presence ends his plan to rush the girl. So, now what? Now, Spider says as she picks up a bottle up from beside her, you are going to share some sake with me, and then I am going to plug you into this little box, and when I do, a soul killer system will wipe your mind and place it in a prison Raish set up a long time ago. It was intended for your father, but I don't think Raish would disapprove of your occupancy. I see. And if I choose not to, you have no choice. You have lost everything your father built. Your nation has turned its back on you. You have dishonored yourself and your family. It has all turned to ash. You must make amends. Spider pours the sake with a steady hand. He passes a cup over to Kai, who takes it with a steady hand. He nods to the computer link and the cable that is coiled next to it. You would have me execute myself? I could force you. I have no wish to. It is inevitable. It is the only honorable thing for you to do. Think of it as seppuku. You are a samurai, are you not? Her words are honed blades, slicing away the shield he had built in his mind. His attempt to deny his failure, the utter totality of his clan's collapse, his part in all of it as first son, his karma. As ruthless as he is, he is still a samurai. You are not my first choice of a Kaisha Kunin, but... He says, Spider nods. He nods back, and solemnly jacks in. As the soul killer rushes upon him, he speaks through the interface. The ocean waves swell, stare into Death's eyes, laughing. The seagulls cry above. Spider watches as the twitching subsides and then ceases. Five long minutes later, she kneels by him, checking the pulse of her victim. She shakes her head and mentally sends a brief flurry of commands. The interlink on the table begins to smoke as the last soul killer system dies thousands of miles away in a fiery blast. She stands, walks out on the deck with the rogue and Shaitan beside her, and stares out in the night sky, bidding Silverhand, Blackhand, and Bartmoss farewell. She stared in silence, struggling with a feeling of emptiness inside. While the fourth corporate war would go on to end in Militech's favor, thanks to the efforts of Strike Team Beta and Spider Murphy, Spider would suddenly disappear. We can still piece together information to get an idea of where she has been since the assassination of Kai Arasaka. Remember that Spider had spread Alt Cunningham's icons across the net for later retrieval, so it was extremely likely that she followed up her mission with hunting down the pieces of Alt in order to string them back together and create Alt once again. Looking at the Cyberpunk Red source book, this theory begins to make a lot more sense. The Black Dog story contained within details the adventure of a mercenary group transporting what is heavily hinted to be Johnny Silverhand's preserved corpse, one that had been preserved in Graham and All since the 2023 raid by Samantha Stevens, a full Borg firefighter and mega fan of the Rocker Boy. The reason for the body's transportation was to reach a friend by the name of Angel another presumed fan of the rocker boy. This love seemed different though, more romantic even, as she softly exclaimed, Hello my love, upon opening the hidden Cairo chamber within. She even had access to an unreleased samurai song and in her official artwork, shares a shocking resemblance to Alt Cunningham. Well you might ask, how would Alt suddenly be back in her body after being trapped in the net for so long? Well there's two possibilities. One being that her body, that held a fate pulse after the 2013 rescue, was kept alive after all that time, or secondly, her personality is now contained within a cloned body of hers. This stops sounding like a crazy conspiracy when you take a second to review the facts. Biotechnica up to this point in time had for the most part perfected human cloning. Not only this, but Arasaka had got their hands on their prized clone by the name Adriana extracting all the files to recreate a cloning facility and replicate the experiments from her head thanks to their skilled netrunners, all of which happened in the Land of the Free adventure book. 
Following this up, players of the Firestorm Shockwave adventure can find a cloning facility within the Night City Arasaka HQ that also contains samples labeled for all Cunningham. And if all of this lore information I'm tossing at you isn't convincing enough, the now retconned Cyber Generation sourcebook already featured a complete story about not only Alt Cunningham being cloned, but also Johnny Silverhand. While the counter argument can be made that Alt Cunningham is still in the net by 2077, I would argue otherwise. It's a possibility that Spider Murphy had failed to locate every piece of Alt Cunningham's icons, meaning that one piece could have been absorbed by a rogue AI seeing as the AI actually states that it isn't all Cunningham, rather, it's just using the image of her. This is obviously a lot of information to take in at once, but it's safe to say that Spider Murphy was likely with all Cunningham at this point in time. While also not confirmed, we can find two entries that allude to Spider in Cyberpunk Red, the first of which is a solo by the name Dylan Murphy, a soft-spoken, middle-aged solo who built a solid reputation on the street for a cool head and a fast 44. Rumor has it, he married a pretty redhead and settled down to raise a horde of children. The last name and red-haired wife could be a reference to him actually being married to Spider Murphy. This information isn't entirely convincing to me, but it remains a possibility. The second is an entry on a netrunner known as Recluse, a hermetic netrunner living in the heart of the combat zone's old Japantown district. He only speaks with clients who can shell out big time cash, never meets anyone in person. Recluse prefers to meet clients in the lobby of her net architecture, where she appears in the form of her icon, a tremendous brown recluse spider with an icy voice. In my opinion, Recluse could either be Spider Murphy, an impersonator, or even a student of hers. It's difficult to make a conclusive statement when we have very little information to go off of. This is of course how cyberpunk tends to be, so that game masters have more freedom. While the only glimpse of Spider we get in 2077 is during a flashback in her spellbook, there still lies the possibility that we see her within Phantom Liberty, or at least learn information on her. However, I want to hear what you all think down below. This was the unraveling and truth behind one of Night City's most talented netrunners, Spider Murphy. I hope you all enjoyed and learned some new information to further your knowledge of the cyberpunk universe. This video utilized Cyberpunk 2020. Red, Guides of a Net, Brainware Blowout, as well as the Firestorm Stormfront and Shockwave Sourcebooks. If you enjoyed the video and perhaps want to learn more about Night City's original mercenary legend, Morgan Blackhand, my previous video compiles everything you need to know. So make sure to subscribe and check out my other content if you haven't already. As always, a huge thanks to all the channel members up on screen. I appreciate all your support and the great interactions we all have. I'm just grateful to be a part of the community and a content creator for you all as well. Phantom Liberty in 2.0 is so close now, this is really a great time to be a cyberpunk fan. Make sure to have a great week, and I will see you later, chooms.